So um, today our speaker is Dr. Oride Doherty. She is a U.S. board certified pediatrician, a public health physician, founder and medical director of Ingress Health Partners. She is currently working on expanding integrated comprehensive primary health care, employing a continuity of care model, incorporating anticipatory guidance and behavioral change at the community level. Integrating this with technology and expanded partnerships to optimize maternal, newborn, and child outcomes. In addition, next slide. Um, at Ingress Health Partners, Dr. Ardi leads a team of dedicated professionals engaging high density communities around maternal and newborn care, working with both local and traditional birth attendants and maternity homes to improve referral patterns and establish safe pregnancy and newborn care practices. Dr. Already and her team established the Simpson Street Newborn Outreach Clinic in Lagos mainland, a novel initiative which provides early born care through outreach services within 48 hours of delivery, educating mothers and their families on safe newborn practices. This is practiced using the centered century model. The Ingress Health Pattern and Partners team has provided early newborn services to 500 babies and their mothers. And the team also provides focused visits for women addressing the preventable contributors to maternal mortality. To maternal mortality, including screening for breast and cervical cancer and other non communicable diseases. Now, before I do the official drum rolls to bring her in, we're going to do a pre quiz, right? So, this is just to have the temperature of the room of all. Oh, what do you know about this topic? I mean, her, her lectures are always, this is not, she's not a stranger to us. This is not her first time with us. And I particularly love her lectures for how simple, how easy to understand, and how applicable this thing is. So before we bring her up, I would like for us to just do a short pre-quiz, right? And it's going to pop up in your screen um, in a couple of seconds. And all you need to do, don't be tensed about it. It's not an exam. It's not jam. It's not, <laughs> it's not any professional exam. It is just a pre-quiz to just know what do you know about the topic. It is okay if you don't know the answers. It's okay if, you, if you're not sure, but just speak what you see, just speak what you feel. Anything that you feel the answer is, it's fine. We're not going to show you any exam score, any result or anything. We just want to know, what do you know about this topic? And I particularly love pre-quizzes before um, having learning sessions because it just helps me to know, hey, I missed this one. Or this is the correct answer. It just creates that tension in your mind about the topic and it helps your learning. So the pre-quiz is up. It should be on your screen. I'm going to obviously just do a quick read through so that it just helps you to um, better pick an answer. Maybe my voice can just also help you to make a good guess. So um, question one, the safest way to put a baby to sleep is on the side, on the back, on the tummy. Question two, postnatal depression can be identified through screening questions without even seeing the woman. True or false? This question reminds me of who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> but anyways, don't worry. I mean, this is much more than money. Knowledge is definitely power. So just share whatever answer that you have. And if you're not seeing this on your screen, you probably joined in after this was launched. But don't worry, after the um, lecture, you're going to have the post quiz and you can also participate as well. Um, okay. Newborn skin rashes should be treated with Fombax A or baby triple cream. True or false? Question four. It is recommended that babies be bathed as soon as possible after delivery to remove the cheesy white vernix from their skin. True or false? Babies should be given cowpaw and vitamins daily after discharge from the hospital after delivery. True or false? I see that some of us are already answering the questions. Um, it would be great if we have a number of people that actually answer the questions. Okay, the best time to start breastfeeding for the newborn is after the first hour of life. True or false? Question seven. When a baby is fussy, the best thing is to shake the baby so the baby will shock and stop crying. True or false? Question eight. The best way to ensure a baby is getting enough food is to feed strictly after every three hours. True 
or false? Question nine. Just to highlight, these questions are not exam tension questions. Just answer what you think you know about it. It's okay if you're seeing some things for the first time, actually. That's actually fine. That's part of learning. Um, but just share what you think the answers are. And in the lecture, look out for the answers, okay? Look out for the answers because she's definitely going to explain and walk us through everything. So don't worry about it if you couldn't provide the correct answers to the questions. So question nine. John, this is newborn yellow eyes and skin is jaundice in newborns yellow eyes and skin is treated by outing the baby outside for the sun to treat true or false yeah i see many people are responding and answering the questions nice and the final question question 10 an important reason to bring back baby to the hospital is if the baby is vomiting true or false okay so um, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be ending the pre-quiz. Okay, so you still have a couple of minutes to answer the question. Just take your time, breathe, relax, just share what you think. You may not be sure. It may just be that you've seen grandma do something or you've seen mama, mommy do something or you've seen somebody do something. Maybe that's what informs your answers, but that's fine. Feel free to pick what you think. And during the lecture, we're going to have all the answers and everything explained and we're going to have a post quiz as well. So share your thoughts, what you think, what you feel. It's okay. It doesn't have to be correct. In a few seconds, we're going to be ending the pre-quiz. Okay, and if you're joining us live on Facebook, oh my God, if you're joining us live on Facebook, yes, you should be able to take the quiz. Shout out to everybody on Facebook. We're over here and definitely you're part of the party that is happening now. So please take the quiz if even if you're joining on Facebook. This is going to definitely be a fun ride. If you also have any questions, please feel free to um, share it in the chat on Facebook and we would catch your questions and we're going to throw all of them to Dr. Already today. So don't worry, you're not missing out if you're not joining on Zoom. Facebook is amazing as well. Okay, we have a few seconds before we end the free free. Okay. Um, time should be up now. Okay, so I presume that nobody's seen the prequiz on their screen. I presume that. So please let us do a warm welcome. I'm going to be doing drum rolls on my end here to bring up our own Dr. Arade Daherty to come and provide her amazing lecture. Guys, please pay attention. Listen and learn because she is, I mean, her lectures are always bomb and amazing. So just, just give a warm welcome. You can type in the chat, just however you want to share your special greetings. Some of us already know her. Just share it in the chat and welcome, Dr. Arade. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for this lecture that you're about to give. So over to you. Thank you very much, Alessandra. With that great big welcome, I dare not mess up. <laughs> <laughs> Do I we trust you? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. So it's good to see everyone. Can you all see my screen and can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can see your screen. Yes, we can. Excellent. So I am just going to start by sharing this slide, which used to be just another slide to me, keep moving, you know, but um, I lost my mom a couple months ago and now this slide just has like new meaning to me. Um, but that's my daughter on the first day of life, my firstborn on the first day of life. And I've always been a bit of a photographer. So I took that picture, actually. Um, so the newborn is um, the baby who has just been born. But also that definition goes till the end of the 20th day of life. Sometimes we say the end of the 30th day of life. So we say first month of life is a newborn period. And I like um, this definition of, or this description of the, the, the full-term newborn. This is actually one of my favorite books. It's a book I go and read again, just to remind myself that most of the children that we see, why we do what we do is because they are, these children are in good health for the most part. So the full-term newborn sleeps more than most mothers like them to in the initial few days when you're so excited, you want to get to meet the baby and the baby's always sleeping. But they also yawn, they hiccup, they sneeze, cough, stretch, salivate, 
They can suck, thankfully, they can swallow most of the time. They can smell, they can taste, they can hear. In a few days, they can even begin to uh, fixate and see. And when they are healthy, they have a, a particular position that they take on. Um, and you can tell when the newborn is not feeling well because they also can adopt a specific um, position. Um, I'm just trying to uh, reduce, yes. Um, and so the most important success factor for the newborn's health and well-being is the mother's health and well-being. And I think that that's something I just want to stress straight out of the door is that for our mothers, I think the most critical thing for us is that throughout pregnancy, your state of health is going to have a significant impact on your body, on your baby's state of health. And your, the state of your mind's health is particularly important. And so we, we start to care for, and I'm very happy to see Dr. Imosemi in the room and a few of our other colleagues um, who will uh, tell you that a mother's health um, and well being, by and large, um, has a lot of impact on baby's health. So, moms with underlying or associated medical conditions, you want to know about them and manage them. The pediatrician wants to be aware and to ensure that mom is getting all the care she needs. We want to be able to anticipate postnatal depression. And we want to be able to ensure that nipple care is optimal because that's sort of half of the battle won. We know that our moms who have um, underlying medical illness or moms who actually pass on in the early stage of children's lives, those babies tend to have poorer outcomes, especially when moms have complications and have to be in the ICU or admitted to hospital for a while. This um, quote is from something my husband always says, which I don't know where he got it from. I know it's something in the world. It says proper prior planning prevents poor performance. And, he's, and, he's, and he emphasizes the process of everything that we do. And I just want to remind everyone that planning during pregnancy, we don't always have nine months. So most of us, if we're lucky, we'll have six months if we know our dates and we're on top of things. Some people I know have literally had 60 days either because they didn't know they were pregnant and then they had the baby early, they had underlying medical conditions, they didn't dare hope they were pregnant and so on and so forth. So everybody says you have nine months to plan, but I know, you know, we all know you don't actually have nine months to plan. You mostly maybe have five or six months. But if you are somebody who was anticipating a pregnancy, for example, you may have had a much longer time to plan. So we always say, start to think about the things you want to do about childcare for your older children, going back to work, feeding the baby what you want to do get a backup of a backup. Um, think about now we have virtual care. I don't want to say thanks to COVID, but it's certainly much more present since the pandemic. Um, so we know about um, virtual support groups and maternal communities and mom and baby resources like we have in the newborn practice and, and, and in MDOC. So the most important thing, because I know that a lot of moms will feel like I have to join something. Make sure they suit your needs. Make sure they are not energy sinks. Some people cannot cope with all of that chatter and they can't really, it doesn't really help them. So ensure that it's going to be good for your emotional and mental health as well. And please, please remember that healthcare is not sickness care. It's also wellness care, especially if you're associated with Ingress and with MDOC, we're very big on ensuring that you are taking care of yourself as a wellness, um, um, a wellness behavior. And so you've got to be thinking about how are you going to continue to ensure that your baby is doing well, okay? So ongoing care. So we think about this in terms of mom and baby, you know? When the baby is inside the mother, it's, it, we're still thinking of, of you as one entity. Once the baby comes out, then there's some things that you have to do separately for the baby, like breastfeed and immunize and, you know, put them on their backs to sleep. I hope some of you, all of you got that question correct. And certainly avoid putting them on their tummies to sleep and we'll explain why. Appropriate clothing and then learning, mom, learning to recognize baby's early warning signs. Some babies can sleep through a meal and wake up very angry and be shouting as though you are supposed to know well. On some level, after a while, you start to know when they start to move about when they're still asleep. They're hungry, but they're enjoying that sleep too much. You have to learn to 
you know, know how to wake your baby up so that you can put her to breast and she can go back to sleep if necessary, especially in the newborn, er newborn period. Um, mom, you need to get your antenatal care. We used to say four visits before. Now we're emphasizing eight visits. We are emphasizing skilled birth attendants. Certainly get your tetanus toxoid injection during pregnancy. That's something that you're doing for your newborn baby because unfortunately, neonatal tetanus, we're still seeing it in, in Nigeria today as much as is possible. When your baby is awake, try and interact. When your baby is asleep, go to sleep. Nobody ever listens to that in the first, with the first pregnancy. It's in the second pregnancy that you realize that ah, I won't make that mistake again. Everybody wants to be awake when the baby is awake and awake when the baby is asleep. It doesn't work. Get as much rest as you can. Stay hydrated. I tell my moms, keep drinking water throughout the day. Have pap beside you. Try and take it a few times of the day. It acts as a galactogog, which means it helps you secrete milk, but it also keeps you a little fed, a little bit of sugar. And it also ensures that you're getting food in even when, you know, when your taste hasn't quite come back early in the first few days. Pap and pepper soup help you. Pepper soup may be a bit tough on the baby's breast milk, but it also helps you start to feel a bit better. So not so much pepper as soup, okay? Sleeping inside an insecticide treated net, that's really important because we do see newborn malaria and we want to prevent it because it can throw us back a fair bit. And please and please pay attention to the older siblings. If you have older children, you have to plan as much for them as you're planning for the newborn because the health and safety of your newborn depends on the health and well-being of your older child. If you, you know, if you doubt it, ignore your firstborn for a minute when you're paying attention to the baby. She too, she'll want to join in in the conversation. And if you have a house with a staircase, you may have two babies tumbling down the stairs um, before long. So ensure that we're understanding what both children's needs are um, in the newborn period. That's really important. So why am I starting with skin? Well, because it's a very important organ. It's the largest organ, largest surface area, you know, large surface area in a newborn, you can imagine. But really importantly also, it's the thing that most mothers are concerned about. Yesterday, I still got a, a call. Somebody said, my baby's already three weeks old. The skin is still looking funny. It's still dry. It's still this and that and the other. And, you know, I want to know what to do with the baby and for the baby. Mothers are very concerned about the baby's skin. Everybody thinks about the baby's photographs when you take pictures, you know, that they, they don't look perfect the way they do in all those pictures. Because some of those pictures are airbrushed. Some of them are, um, some of them, the baby has plumped out, baby is five months old. But when you see the baby, baby looks perfect. Well, I say it starts with the easiest thing on your baby's skin, mild soap. And there are variety, I don't particularly promote anything, but I have found Vaseline is great for baby's skin, locks in the moisture as this olive oil, especially in the early days. And you can use both of them top to toe, including around the circumcision and in the diaper area. So those are really good things to have. Mild soap, sensitive skin dog, Johnson's baby um, formulation. Those things are great, right? Many newborn rashes um, happen, many, variety of them. I just say your baby is just getting used to the new environment. You know, some people use Avino, you feel the skin. Some people use shea butter, you feel the skin. Some use Vaseline, they feel the skin is peeling. Well, there are many things that are happening. The important thing is that those rashes in the first month, they are self-limiting. Your baby is literally shedding and coming into himself or herself. I always advise you avoid from Bat A and the triple creams, even when they have baby triple cream written on them, because they are not healthy for your baby. Many of them contain a steroid that will peel off your baby's skin. If you're going to use any such skin, one, it has to be um, um, prescribed by a doctor, and two, usually it's not in the newborn period. It's after the newborn period, when there's a serious thing, then we prescribe a very specific thing. We don't usually try and treat with two or three creams at the same time. And those triple creams have several ingredients in them. So for most of us, when the baby is born, if the baby is born in a hospital or at a nursing home, the first cleaning will be done by the nurses. The most important thing in the beginning is that they want to keep the baby dry. And the recommendation now is that we wait up to 24 hours for the first actual bath, right? And we leave the vernix on for as long as possible because it's said to now keep with research as fun. It keeps the baby warm. It's a cheesy thing that's on the baby. So take off the blood, wipe off the blood, use olive oil, but you don't have to necessarily give the baby a bath in the first 24 hours. And WHO is now saying blood sugar 
and, and um, cold stress are both helped by not giving the baby um, a bath within the first 24 hours. Um, and then at home, um, I got this uh, picture from, um, there's a, a, a family post, the Delightful Delaney's, and they're a very interesting couple. It's a mixed couple, mixed race couple, and grandma went to do a move and it's very interesting, very interesting. If you want to look at it, go to goodnewsnigeria.com and look for the delightful delay news. You'll enjoy it. Um, but basically, it's showing that, you know, your first bath at home or baby's bath can be any way, can be the traditional way, the way we do it with our mothers. Your mom is sitting, or grandma is sitting, baby is across her thighs, and the bathtub is beneath her. Sometimes she, what she has is a stool that is slightly lower than her. Or you can put the baby in a tub if you are feeling comfortable. Don't put the baby in a tub until the cord is, has fallen off and um, the circumcision is fully healed. Other than that, you know, you can top and tail in the first few days, first few weeks even. Um, I certainly, I don't, I don't uh, immerse early. I actually don't immerse um, newborns just because, you know, I'm not, I've never felt uh, confident in nursing newborns. Um, and usually when they're a bit bigger and they're a bit firmer in your hands, then you feel like you can do stuff with them. Um, make sure the room is warm. There's no breeze blowing anywhere. Certainly no fan and everything you need should be close to you. Um, the water temperature, we never measure water temperature in Nigeria, I find, except those of us who now have these ni nice fancy new things. But certainly that water must be no more than 38 degrees centigrade if you measure it. And if not, use the back of your hand it should not even be anywhere as warm as the milk that the baby takes inside, right? So if you put your breast milk on your hand, you'll see that your breast milk actually is almost room temperature. Babies actually feel, so I have three children. My first two were fine with warm water. My third child will scream if you use the same temperature of water. He literally needed room temperature water. So babies will be different. Make sure you get the right thing for your baby. I always say start with the head, wipe it clean. When you start to use shampoo, Put the baby in your, you know, use a football hold. I'll show you in the previous slide. Use a football hold and wipe the head first. Rinse off, first of all, right? Before you now um, start trying to uh, wash the rest of the body. It's best to get rid of the head first. Um, and I think the other thing that that does is it sort of reduces the baby's being shocked because the body is still wrapped up, right? So you don't expose the baby all at once. We do it stage by stage. First, wash the, the head and the scalp, rinse, take, um, take the water out dry, and then now move to the face. The face, we usually say just wipe it um, in the early days. Why? They're only eating, taking breast milk, right? Even if they're taking other forms of milk, all you need to do is wipe. You don't need soap on the face in the early days. A lot of babies actually respond um, to that soap initially in the first few days with a rash. Um, I like to top and tail. And why I like top and tail is because it gives, it helps you become confident about holding your baby, right? And so top and tail just means having a sponge or a washcloth, having it dipped in um, your mild soap, wiping, washing the underarms everywhere from the neck down to the upper arms, you pour a bit of water. Then you take the lower parts Again, you pour a bit of water. You have to get into all the folds. Babies have a lot of neck folds. They have a lot of folds in their genitalia, you know, in their bum, bum, back and front. And so you want to get into those folds. And you want to get into them because if you leave them and you don't clean them, they start to get cracks and then they can get a, a fungal infection or they can get a, a boil, a staph infection. You want to avoid that. Um, some babies get cradle cap. It's very common among our moms. I, I, I. Uh, I haven't met a group, I haven't had a group yet where I don't get every crop of 15, 20, there'll be at least one person with cradle, cradle cap or seborrhea. The fastest way to say that is contact one of your groups. You can look it up online, but always have a bit of um, baby oil that you massage into and then use gentle, gentle brush or the tiny baby combs to comb it out gently. It doesn't go away immediately. Sometimes it's very inflamed. You may have to see the doctor or the nurse. And nurses are really they're very good at demonstrating to you how to gently take it off. It's not something you should try and do alone if it's frustrating you because you keep wanting to try and do more and you may take off too much of it. So if it's, if you're, if it's too much of a problem, call one of your providers or watch a video online. Um, 
you know, I want to just say that hand washing, I'm really glad that people have become more um, careful about washing their hands. You should always wash your hands when you're caring for a newborn. Um, I was going to ask this as a question before, but I'm trying to make sure that we don't spend too much time. Always remember, before you handle your newborn, after you handle your baby's diaper, you have to wash your hands. When you've gone to the toilet, you have to wash your hands. After touching food, your own food, don't think you can go from the kitchen, you just finished cooking pepper and something and something, and you touch your baby. You will sleep, and the baby will not sleep you too, you will not sleep that night. If it happens once, nobody will tell you that you have to do it again. Uh, you, you should not do it again. If, it's, if you have to, many of us have to, when you have your first baby or your second baby, you don't necessarily have all the hands you need, right? So if you must, either you wear gloves when you're inside the kitchen, or you handle the baby with gloves after you've been cooking. So choose and do it very carefully because you don't want to take any spice from the kitchen and handle your baby if you haven't washed your hands thoroughly. So it's not only infection and poop and pee that can cause problems for you and the baby. Pepe can also cause issues. Long nails, I see a lot of long nails now. I think they're beautiful, but please um, don't wear long nails and manage my baby. If you are a mother in my practice and I see you with long nails, I usually say, please don't be annoyed. You take off these nails while we are dealing with a newborn until the baby is older and the baby is not so prone to the nicks and scratches that come from these long nails. And every mother and grandmother, everybody caring for the baby, I like to examine their fingers because of hand fungus. See a lot of hand fungus and you don't realize this. You start seeing baby breaking out. So that's something that's really important. You have a hand fungus, let's treat you well ahead of your baby coming. They can use topical things. The dermatologist works very closely with us and they'll make sure that we can treat all of that before, um, before baby is born. Or if we only see it after baby is born, we'll still make sure that you can get it treated. We like to use chlorhexidine gel, 4%, for the umbilical cord. Many places still use methylated spirit, that's fine. Chlorhexidine gel, you only use it once a day. It's an antiseptic, you put it at the base and take it all the way up and all the way down. It should be given to you at the time of delivery in a newborn kit or a baby care kit. But sometimes we don't have that. And when we don't, it's fine for mothers to use, sorry, it's fine for mothers to use methylated spirit. But with methylated spirit, you have to remember, you have to clean a bit more frequently and you have to ensure that you're not, you know, when you handle, handle, handle so much, make sure that you're washing your hands very frequently, okay? Circumcision care for boys, I just say, when it's still very fresh, remember they would have given you the Vaseline gauze to rub over the penis, uh, to put over the penis and put either penicillin or Vaseline over it. The important thing is poo poo, we will just use a lot of water as if you're tambouring the baby, but gently pour the water until all the poo poo comes off the front area of the, of the baby's bum bum, where the circumcision is. And then in the back area, you can actually make sure you rinse off poo poo very well. It will heal within a week. There's a lot of screaming and crying, I know. I like to just quickly do that circumcision very early. Honestly, usually by 72 hours, it's already looking better. Everybody's feeling more comfortable. Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline. I like Vaseline for this thing, eh? Because you can put it plenty, plenty. And the most important thing is that maybe you will with Vaseline, not, um, the Vaseline will not allow the urine to touch the circumcision area. And it will also act as a barrier from poo poo. When the baby does that big explosive poo poo that they do in the first, in the first uh, few weeks of, of life. So I just put this picture here. So that we'll see the things that everybody likes to know. You know what do you what do you uh, what do you need to have? We talked about the chlorhexidine gel. Um, we talked about Vaseline. Thermometers are very important to have. We'll talk about what's a normal temperature now. Usually, I I like to talk about rectal temperatures, but definitely this will show you. And the, the new ones will even show you is slightly orange. So this baby is beginning to run the temperature. Certainly, we want to have something that we can use the nasal aspirator to take out mucus. Um, the saline spray drops, this thing right in the center here that says little remedies. It's also a really lovely thing to use. And I'll tell you why. When you hold it upright like this and you, and you press, right? It comes out as a spray. When baby's nose is blocked in the early days and you do that, it squirts a little 
spray into the baby's nose. And what it does is that it, 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 um, it um, takes away the mucus, it clears the mucus, right? If you turn it upside down and you put just a drop into the nostril as well, it has the same effect of dropping and reducing the mucus plug. So either way, either as a spray or as a drop, it's really good for uh, to have in the in the in your newborn kids. For me, it's a lifesaver. I tell every mother, you must have it uh, because you know some mothers are very good, some grandmothers are very good at sucking out the mucus, and some people don't know how to. And when the baby cannot breathe through their nose and they cannot sleep, nobody's sleeping in that house. So that thing it saves a lot of people a lot of wahala. And um, cowpaw is very important. Usually. It's post the newborn period when you start to get the first immunizations that require. But a fussy baby, uh, you can't really know what's ca causing the fussiness. Sometimes scalpel is helpful. Always have it in your kit. Another important thing is the nail clippers. I know you're wondering, I say, eh, at that age, nail clippers. Well, I'll tell you what. During my training, the commonest reason why a baby will come into the emergency room screaming and not be consolable for hours is because they would have used their nails to scratch their cornea. It's very painful, very painful. And so I encourage everyone, by the time, if you have a baby who was born post-term or you have a baby who, um, sorry, or you have a baby who, um, who um, has long nails, has grown long nails, it's important for you to after the bath, when the nails are nice and soft, you can't do it by yourself, get someone to help you. But notice this, um, this has a magnifying glass so you can see better. This is the good old one, the kind that all of us use. But at this age now, to be honest with you, I will need one with a magnifying glass. So if your mom is helping you, give her the one with a magnifying glass so she can help you cut the baby's nails if you are feeling uncomfortable. I'll talk about a swaddling cloth in one of the next few slides. Um, these are really important. I've talked, the medicine dropper is right beside, beside the cow paw. So these things are important um, for you to help your baby. Now, um, by usually by the second week of life and baby start forming tears, and mom will tell you that they're starting to have a, you know, some nasal, uh, some, not nasal, some eye discharge. And that's because, usually because they have a blocked tear duct. Now, the baby's tear ducts are very, very tiny. I just gave you an illustration here. So you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see, this is what it should look like. This is the side of the nose. This is the eye, this is the side of the nose here. This is how the tear duct runs. Unfortunately, when it's very narrow like this, it's blocked. And that's not unusual in, in um, many newborns. And it means, that means that um, the thing is not going, the tears are not clearing and they're not going down because when the tears are forming, unless the baby is crying, it should really be flowing down. And so if it's not flowing down, it has a blockage, then it can be, it can be clogged, right? And it, the clogging can be made worse by all the various kinds of normal sitting around on the skin bacteria that the baby can have. The thing to do is when you see it, Eyes are not pink. Baby appears to be otherwise okay. Wakes up in the morning, you notice it maybe. Just take a damp washcloth or a cotton ball. Don't use cotton wool that you pluck like this because it can leave wisps in the baby's eyes. So either you use something that is already, you know, one of the already flattened gauze pads or a damp washcloth or a cotton ball, the ones that are already rolled, you know, in the, um, like that, a ready-made rolled ones. Those ones don't leave the chaka chaka, you understand? And some plain warm water and just wipe. So you wipe, like the baby's eyes are closed. You just wipe from the center like this and you wipe towards the side. Now notice that if I do it on my face, it doesn't look like I would hit my own nasal lacrimal gland. But when you do it on the baby, because of the small size of the baby's face, you are actually wiping that gland and helping to massage the duct. And so we encourage the wiping and also the massaging several times a day with that warm cloth and with that um, dampened washcloth. I didn't say warm because when we say warm now, some people do hot, just water, room temperature water is okay. Eyes are closed, wipe the eyes from the inside to the outside. Do it several times a day, clean it because you'll be cleaning the thing as you're going, but also do it just several times a day. 
you help to massage the, the gland as we go along. And in a short time, you know, um, it will clear. Some babies can actually keep that thing, can be blocked for as long as a, a, a year of life. You definitely, your pediatrician or your primary care doctor or nurse would have seen you at that time and they'll tell you what to do next. That baby needs to be seen by the ophthalmologist, that's the eye doctor. So what's the safest way for the baby to sleep? I know some people said lying on their side. The safest way for the baby to sleep is for the baby to sleep on their back, um, to be not overdressed or underdressed, for there to be nothing else in the crib. So we say share a room with your baby, but not a bed. Share a room with your baby, but not a bed. Very hard in our part of the world because most of us don't get a separate bed for the baby early. Um, we get a Moses basket, which is really not very safe because you don't have the, um, the uh, latitude to sort of keep the baby in a big space that allows the baby to sort of spread. Underneath, you want a tight mattress. And I know most of us don't smoke, but people around us smoke. And when we say we don't smoke, but we use firewood, all not smoking, no. firewood not smoking, charcoal not smoking, all not smoking. Eh? Don't smoke around the baby. No firewood, no charcoal around the baby. I'm not saying don't cook. I'm saying don't do it around the baby, okay? As much as possible, if you're going to be in a, even if you're in a single room, you can have a fan on somewhere in the room to circulate the air, not trained on the baby. Mm? And you can swaddle, and we'll talk about swaddling, eh? to, reduce, um, to reduce the startling. So in the first month of life, um, the baby easily startles. It's a natural reflex, right? It's part of the moral reflex. It's called the startle reflex. So something that happens in the room, if you slam a door, you know, the baby's hearing, but at the same time, it can make the baby startle. Um, so some of us would then say, swaddle the baby, okay? So a baby is, is, is very fussy. You check that the diaper is dry. You check that it's not that it, some of us, you know, we wear cap, we wear three layers, we wear the jumpsuits, and we wear this big uh, blanket that we buy from Lagos Island. No, the baby only needs as many layers as you are wearing. So check whether the baby is warm, cold, baby hungry, the diaper clean, baby tired, you know. Is the environment calm and soothing? Sometimes you need some something making noise in the background, whether it's one of those far away generators just making white noise we call it hmm? before you now say okay you've done everything you can consider swaddling the baby is important for it not to be tight we can share a video on swaddling the baby it's actually quite simple um to swaddle the baby the important thing is to keep the baby's head out wrap first arm wrap second arm the nurses know how to do it beautifully they'll show you how to do it tuck the baby in and the baby sleeps perfectly for the nurses then the baby doesn't sleep perfectly for you. You to learn how to swaddle the baby, okay? Usually you finish swaddling by the age of three months, they don't need to be swaddled anymore, okay? Um, never, never, never shake a newborn to shock the newborn because it's brain damage, okay? Never shake a newborn. So we're coming to the end of our, this thing. I just want us to learn about a few things, uh, a few behaviors that we should be aware of in newborns. Babies sleep a lot. They may sleep up to 17, 18 hours at a day, uh, uh, in a day, in 24 hours. They sleep from anything from 20 minutes to four hours. Some people feel that their babies are 20 minutes sleepers. Some of them will sleep up to three hours. Don't let them get to four hours. Wake them up for a feed. You need to feed them um, on demand. Breastfeed them exclusively on demand, but um, as much as possible, um, ensure that you are feeding them frequently as frequently as you can. Um, in the first few days, frequency is more important than duration, but I will we'll get to that. There's something that happens when babies are sleeping. In what we call the third phase of sleep, where they are starting to fall asleep or they are beginning to wake up and come out of sleep, they do this thing where their eyes are rolling and it looks as if they are convulsing. They are not convulsing. They're in a stage of sleep. They may even have a bit of a jerk, right? As long as it doesn't persist, as long as it does not continue to happen, right? Baby will soon fall asleep, but baby will soon wake up. It's fine. If it happens and it continues to happen and it just continues like that, the baby needs to be seen as an emergency, okay? Periodic breathing is another thing. Normally, 
newborns have this pattern of breathing. They'll breathe fast, then they'll pause for about 10 seconds, then they'll start to breathe fast again. And this may happen for a few minutes and then they breathe normally again and then they do this cycle again. They should never stop breathing for more than 10 seconds. They should never stop breathing for more than 10 seconds. If they stop breathing for more than 10 seconds, there's an issue, okay? That's important. That's a reason to bring the baby to hospital. So you see that thing when they do it, and they seem to stop, and they start breathing again. That's fine, okay? Watch it. Come to know it. Become comfortable with it. If you're uncomfortable with it, come in, call us. Let's do a video call, and we'll, 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 we'll observe it too and make a determination what's going on. We won't talk too much about exclusive breastfeeding now because we've talked about it before, but I know we don't always have the same audience. The most important thing, breastfeeding on demand, no other food or drink, not even water. The baby's getting vitamins and minerals, or I'm sorry, vitamins and medicines or even ORS does not mean that you are no longer exclusively breastfeeding. The golden hour is the first hour of life. In that golden hour, if you are able to get baby to put to breast successfully and latch on. Not much may come out. Nothing may seem to come out. It may be drops. It's quite enough for the baby. You're much more likely to have success with exclusive breastfeeding if your baby is fed within the first hour. The babies who have the greatest success are fed within the first hour. The success rate dips as you go through the day. That doesn't mean that a baby fed at 23 hours, um, breastfed at 23 hours, cannot be successfully breastfed. It just means that when we examine many, many, many babies, thousands and thousands of them, we see that the ones with the greatest success are the ones who are started the earliest. The most important thing, therefore, is as long as your baby is healthy, you should have had that conversation with your midwife to say, as soon as my baby comes out, everything is okay, I want to breastfeed my baby, and I want to do it immediately. Colostrum is the first thing that comes out when, ba when um, baby is born of the breast. And it actually can start up to a week before delivery. Some women will see it even before. It's thick, yellowish, contains a lot of protein, contains a lot of, contains a lot of anti, natural antibiotics, mommy-made antibiotics and antibodies. Very good for the baby. We should not throw it away. We should give it to the baby. By the second week, most of that colostrum is gone. Breastfeed our babies on demand, i.e. check it. They make, <coughs> they start making, don't wait for the matter to become one, 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 and there's an emergency. No. As soon as the baby starts making signs, you too, quickly drink your water, settle yourself, make yourself comfortable, so that before the mouth make, uh, mm, baby gets onto the breast. And it's really important, and I'll tell you why. You see, if you're not emotionally, psychologically ready, and the baby comes to the breast, and then you want to move and start, there can be problems. So quickly have everything near you. As soon as they start making signs, you to make your signs, get everything ready, okay? Some of them need to be fed on a schedule. Usually, if the baby is healthy, um, you won't need to feed them on a schedule. They will tell you when they are ready to, to go. Between, uh, by the end of the first week, they start getting what we call an appetite surge. It doesn't mean that you don't have enough milk. It means your baby is hungrier. You see the difference? It's not that your milk is not enough. It's that your baby's appetite is getting bigger. The thing to do is to continue to put to breast and keep putting to breast. Now, the frequency is more important than the duration, i.e., it's better you put the baby to breast one o'clock, two o'clock, two thirty, then three, then four, then four thirty, than that you say, oh, when I put him to breast at one o'clock, he's up for thirty minutes. No, in the early days, that's long duration is not as important as the frequency. Every time you're coming back to the breast, it's coming back to the breast. So just make up your mind during pregnancy. That's how it's going to be for a few days. Um, skin to skin, we talked about this in other forum, but I. When your baby smells your breast, it encourages the baby to latch on, right? You expect the baby to have gained their, to have regained their birth weight by the end of the first, by the end of the first, um, at the end of the second week of life. Um, and if there's a problem with that, obviously you must see your doctor or your nurse. By the third week, they start to have this inconsolable crying um, and it disappears by the end of the third month. Swaddling sometimes helps. The football hold sometimes help where you put the baby's um, bare skin tummy on your hand and you put their head up like this and you just carry them around around the um the room for a while. Hand them up to somebody else if hand them up to somebody else if you are tired. Okay. 
This is really information for the nurses and the people who provide care for, for the moms. But it's good for mom to know that babies must be seen within the first week of life. By the end of the second week, just for a weight check. Subsequently, um, we follow Nigerian newborns. When do you bring a baby back to the hospital? Fast or difficult breathing. Baby is very cold. Baby is very hot. Baby is not waking up. Baby cannot stop crying. Baby seems very tired. Baby is vomiting or has diarrhea. Baby is jaundice. You would have checked for jaundice before you go home, but you will check again before the end of the second week to make sure it's gone down if it came up at all before. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.